with a rap sheet almost as extensive as his rhymes the american rapper mystical's life has been filled with struggle pain feud forcible assault allegations punishments and high recognition with his own unique style of rap mystical quickly became one of new orleans most sought after rappers in the late 1990s and early 2000s this is the story of the rise and fall of no limit rapper mystical Hello everyone, welcome back to the nosysoutherner.com. So born Michael L. Tyler on September 22, 1970, Mystical grew up in the 12th Ward of New Orleans, Louisiana. Early in his life, Mystical juggled school and trying to write his rap. He stated in an interview, many times instead of doing his homework, he spent time propped up on his floor in his home writing his first lyrics and rhyme. I wrote my first lyric on the floor with my back propped up against my bed like this here. I think I was probably supposed to be doing homework, but I was, yeah, that was homework, all right. Yeah, it paid off, it pays the bills. It probably had something to do with listening to LL Rock the Bells or Slick Rick Lottie Dottie or something, you know, it was one, it was one of them old raps. It was, I, I know LL and Slick, and Slick Rick was a, a big part of making me want to write my first rap. I didn't realize. Now, after graduating from Walter L. Cohen High School in New Orleans, Mystical enlisted in the United States Army in 1988. He spent many years of the military service as a combat engineer during the Gulf War. Now, unfortunately, during this time, Mystical did serve time in military prison for allegedly being off base at a time when he should not have been. It was stated that during this time, that's when he crafted and honed his own unique vocal delivery. One that he actually greatly stated that it was greatly influenced by the yelling of his drill sergeants. Now, in an interview with Essence Magazine, Mystical stated he received his first start in a well-known record store called Peaches Records in Uptown New Orleans. Brought the music in here, you know, worked the numbers I was around here. Then we, you know, we had our posters, we used to come and do in-store signings. So it, it was a lot of things that, you know, that, that helped my career. Peaches, like, you know, it's, it's a cornerstone. Peaches was definitely one of the first stores that I, you know, bought my first records from. Probably DJ Jimmy, Tucker, oh yeah, that Tucker, I had the red one too. That T.T. That Tucker, that little red tape, stop playing. It's my New Orleans, man. Yeah, you gotta be from New Orleans to know that, though. Staying close to his New Orleans roots, Mystical chose to work with local labels, Big Board Records, and later, No Limit Masterpiece Records. Mystical debuted with the 10-track album, Mystical, released on Big Board Records in 1994. A producer by the name of Leroy Precise Edwards produced the album and Jive Records later re-released the same material with several new tracks under the title Mind of Mystical in 1996. With this album, it quickly rose to number one on the top heat seekers charts. This is a division of Billboard's charts that set aside for new and upcoming developing artists. Mind of Mystical made its mark as a very personal album for the rapper. After coming under fire with Drag em in the River by UNLV and F Big Boy by BG, Mystical took the opportunity to show what he was made of with the response track Beware. The track Beware was dedicated to his sister Michelle Tyler. Now, unfortunately, during this time, Mystical sister Michelle Tyler was tragically murdered and stabbed by her then boyfriend Damon Nelville. Now, Damon Nelville happens to be the grandson of the Nelville brothers, Charles Nelville. Now, trying to move forward from the tragic murder of his sister, Mystical later signed with Masterpiece No Limit Records in 1997. Now, at this time, he released the album Unpredictable. 
this third release gave Mystical a more solid footing with critics and the listening public. Now, No Limits in-house production team Beats by the Pound, which is now known as the Medicine Men, worked on the album as well. Now, Unpredictable peaked at number three on the Billboard's 200, and it quickly climbed to number one on the top R&B and hip hop albums chart, with the hits as "Ain't No Limit," which rose quickly rose to number 63, and "Murder 2," which again dealt with the murder of his sister Michelle. Now, in 1998, Mystical released an album called Ghetto Fabulous with the label No Limit. But it was teaming up with then hit maker Busta Rhymes that same year is what really put Mystical on the right track toward finding his own place in the rap world. Now, after, appear now after appearing with Busta Rhymes on Is They Wildin' With Us and Getting Rowdy With Us is when Mystical hit his stride. Now, two years later, in the year 2000, Mystical put out the album called Let's Get Ready on Jive Records. Now, this album is what really catapulted him into mainstream rap relevancy. With the song Danger, which is also known as Been So Long, featured the pop R&B star Nivea, quickly became a number one single as of June 2001 on the Billboard's Hot R&B and Hip Hop Songs chart. Now that same year, Let's Get Ready went two times platinum and it was honored by the Soul Train Music Awards under the category The Best Video of the Year. Now one of his most notable tracks from Let's Get Ready is the number one single Shake Your Ass. Now this was a production from the hit making teams in Neptunes which is Pharrell Williams and Chad Hugo. Now, Let's Get Ready debuted at number one on the Billboard's 200 and earned Mystical a cool $2.2 million that year. Unfortunately, the new millennium has been filled with more legal trouble for Mystical than his actual career. Now, he did release an album called Tarantula in 2001 on the Jive Records. This album fared exceptionally well and if it weren't for some of his legal issues that arose soon after its release, it could have been a tremendous springboard for Mystical's recording career. Now, Tarantula included the hit single Bouncing Back, which is also again known as Bumpin' Me Against the Wall. Now, this was found for and critically acclaimed for its jazz elements alongside Mystical's unique brand of rap. In 2001, Mystical collaborated with Ludacris on Move Bitch from his sophomore album, Word of Mouth. And in 2002, Mystical collaborated with Lil Jon and the East Side Boys and Crazy Bone on I Don't Give an F from the group's King of Crump album. The following year, Mystical took a starring role aside of Lorenzo Lamas in the film 13 Dead Men. This film was about a diamond thief framed for murder, a corrupt prison warden, and a grizzled inmate with a passion for justice. In 2003, the album Tarantula was nominated for a Grammy Award for Best Rap Album and Mystical was granted a Grammy nomination for Best Male Rap Solo Performance. Now, shortly after having a Grammy nominated high, unfortunately, Mystical experienced some extreme lows. Now, on January 16, 2004, Mystical was sentenced to six years in prison after he pleaded guilty to extortion and sexually assaulting his hairstylist. Now, according to the, his former hairstylist, Mystical and his two bodyguards forced the woman to perform fellatio on them and accused her of stealing over $80,000 worth of checks. A videotape that surfaced at Mystical's home put a nail in the coffin for the case. Now, while serving time at Louisiana Aylin Hunt Correctional Center for these crimes, he received a concurrent sentence for tax offenses. Now, in 2006, he was sentenced to a year in prison for trying to cheat the federal government out of $271,000 in taxes. In the tax case, Mystical pleaded guilty in August and two misdemeanors counts of failing to file tax returns. 
in the amount of eight hundred and twenty four thousand nine hundred and sixteen dollars he earned in 1998 and also nine hundred and thirty thousand nine hundred and fifty three dollars that he earned in 1999 now the judge ordered him to pay back taxes and penalties in addition to one year sentence now shortly after being released in 2010 mystical went back to jail and served another three months in 2012 for domestic battery abuse and then unfortunately he was actually sentenced again in 2016 he turned himself in into new orleans police and was arrested again for alleged forcible assault now in the alleged incident took place at a shreveport louisiana casino where mystical was performing on the legends of southern hip-hop tour on october 22nd 2016 now mystical was wanted for first degree forcible assault along with another man of warren holman now it was said that Holman was arrested in Killian, Texas and both he and Mystical were being held at the time on a $2 million bond. Now according to police, uh, a former associate Tanisha Warford was allegedly wanted for attempting to convince the unnamed victim to drop the accusations against the rapper. Now Tanisha, for, I mean, Tanisha Warford was on the loose but she was later charged with one count of accessories after the fact to a first degree forcible assault. Police stated that investigations into the assault and after gathering the victim's statements, witness testimony and DNA evidence, they found enough evidence linking Mystical and Holman to the crime. Now after spending over 18 months behind bars, Mystical was finally released in February of 2019 after posting a $3 million bail. Now it's being stated that the money came from an advance for a new recording deal and also funds was raised by Mystical's family and friends. Now after being released from jail, Mystical did make a statement saying that he was grateful for the opportunity to get back to being a father to his daughter, Michelle Tyler, his son, Million Tyler, and creating music. He stated that being on the outside was a surreal feeling. Now the rapper stated that he spent a lot of his time behind bars writing memoirs and music, fine tuning songs that he had written before but never released. Now Mystical like I said, during the late 1990s and early 2000s, Mystical was the rapper. I mean, with his own different type of rap and his unique style. And many people say they liked the fact that he would yell and, you know, be authoritative in his raps. He was a very prominent rapper. But unfortunately, his talent was overshadowed by his legal trouble. Now, I want you guys to tell me if Mystical released any new music, would you be here for it? Now, considering his past behavior and crime, could you get past what he done to actually enjoy his music? I want you guys to make sure to let me know your opinions below. And also, for more stories like these, leave me a thumbs up and let me know if you like it. Like I said, definitely leave your opinions below. And until next time, I want you guys to have a good day. Bye.